Hey, what's up everybody? Seja here and I'm down in my Spagyrix lab and it's Sunday today and we are doing a distillation of our Hawthorne Spagyrix Essence. So today we're going to be uh, distilling what in alchemy is referred to as the mercury or the spirit of the plant which manifests as the alcohol. So since we were doing this process down here in the lab, I thought I'd take a little bit of time to share with you a little bit about the distillation process. This is one of the critical processes in the creation of what we might consider a little bit more um, refined or a little bit more complex spagyric forms of extract. And um, just wanted to take some time to walk you through with it. I know we've been getting a lot of questions about distillation over the last week as we've been running the Herbal Alchemy training sessions. If you are not in the Herbal Alchemy training session, scroll down to the bottom of this page and sign up. It's a totally free course that we're running right now. It's going to be only available for a limited time. So be sure to check out the Herbal Alchemy training sessions. We've been working on this project for over a month and it is awesome awesome. We've got tons of amazing content that we're literally just giving away for free. So be sure to check that out. And um, so in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about distillation. And distillation in alchemy, as I said, is one of the primary methods of extraction or separation that we use in spagyric processes. Now in general, when creating spagyrics, we're doing, there's two primary types of distillation that you do. One is distillation of what in alchemy they call the sulfur of the plant. And the sulfur of the plant is the soul or the essential oils of the plant. Um, that in the spagyric essence process as well as much more advanced processes like the quintessence or the plant stone um, is the first step in creation of these more advanced forms of spagyrics. The second type of distillation that we do is a distillation of the mercury or the spirit of the plant, which manifests as the alcohol. Now in modern herbal pharmacy, typically the sulfur and the mercury of a plant is extracted just through simple tincturing of the herb. Um, you know, some plants may not yield the sulfur in a tincture, it's getting a little more complex. Um, but what we see in modern herbal medicine making is that the sulfur and the mercury um, aren't purified on their own, um, which makes them a less refined form of medicine and makes them much less focused on the soul and spirit level in the way that they heal us. Now that's what's so cool about spagyrics in the way we use distillation is that you get a full separation of the sulfur and mercury of the plant. Now the way that we got this mercury here, this hawthorn, is actually through fermentation. So we'll take that plant and ferment it into a wine and then we purify that wine through this process of distillation where, you know, in that fermentation process, they say it's like the plant's going into the underworld and it's slowly being, you know, going through this process of putrefaction, of decay. The body of the plant is being broken down and fermenting. And in that process, it's giving up its spirit or the way my teacher Robert Bartlett describes it, it's giving up its ghost. And then when we bring that wine to distillation, what we're doing is we're capturing that spirit of the plant which is in the form of alcohol which you know is interesting that we use the word spirits to talk about alcohol it comes from alchemy because the alchemists saw that alcohol is the universal spirit of the plant kingdom uh, because every plant in the plant kingdom when you ferment it will yield alcohol so um, what I want to do here is run you through a little bit about the setup of the distillation of mercury here. So um, down here, this blue piece of equipment here is a, is a heating mantle. This is our fire element in more modern day um, laboratories. What's nice about heating mantles is that they fit a round bottom flask, a flask like this that has a round bottom to it. And what's cool about the mantles is they give you an even distribution of heat around the material. Uh, here we're using a 
a five liter or 5,000 milliliter round bottom flask that fits into the heating mantle. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour our, um, now this has already been distilled a few times. Typically when you're uh, doing an initial wine distillation, you are yielding, um, you know, this will be colored. But since we've already distilled this Hawthorne a few times, it yields a clear spirit. So we're just going to pour our Hawthorne alcohol into our round bottom flask. This is a very wide mouth flask, so it has this adapter on top to make it so that we can um, attach our other glassware to it. So we just secure that on there with a little clip. And this is our... I always consider these round bottom flasks, these are like a womb. It's like a, it's like a, it's the lower world part of the distillation unit. And that's the thing about alchemy is that everything has meaning, right? This isn't just, we're not just distilling alcohol and using Pyrex glassware, right? That's kind of looking at it from more of a scientific perspective, but looking at it from an alchemistic perspective, Everything here has meaning. So this round bottom flask, it's a womb, it's a vessel in which a gestation is occurring where something new is gonna be reborn, something's gonna be transformed through this vessel. So I, for me, like I always see glassware as they're instruments of transformation. They're, they're, they're sacred, right? There's a meaning behind them. So I always, you know, do my best to approach them with uh, care and conscious awareness. A, because sometimes some pieces can be a little bit expensive and you don't want to break it. But on the other hand, too, it's like having that reverence for these instruments that are ultimately going to be utilized to transform these plants. So the next level of our distillation unit, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways you can do it. One, you can use what was called a bio flask. And this is basically um, a flask that is very commonly used for essential oil steam distillation, where you actually pack the plant material in here and then you would have water down here, and as you boil the water, the wa the steam passes through the plant and carries the essential oils over. Um, so you can use these in alcohol distillation, and what it does is basically provides for what's called an expansion chamber, where the vapors funnel up in here, and excuse me, and then the vapors expand here. Many of them will drip back down and only the finest, most volatile components of the plants will rise up. It does yield a significantly slower distillation, um, which in alchemy is typically preferable. Now, the other thing that you can use is what we would just call a column, and this is an integrated column and still head integrated as one. And as you can see, this is a much narrower apparatus, so all the vapors just shoot straight up here and condense very quickly, and this yields typically a much more rapid distillation. Um, generally speaking, slower is better in alchemy. Um, so for our purposes here, I'm actually gonna do this distillation with the bio flask to provide that expansion chamber. So whenever you're hooking up your glassware, it's always good to lube it up so that you don't um, so that you don't fuse your glassware because glass expands as it heats up. So if you don't put a little bit of lube on there or oil or something, sometimes your glass can get stuck and it's really difficult to get them separated. So here we have our still head. This is where all of the vapors are gonna be condensing from a vapor back down into a liquid. And I'm gonna talk about the meaning behind all of this in a moment. Uh, but I just kind of want to show you the general setup. Now, this top of the still head is open, so and that is providing um, a place where we can place a thermometer and analyze the temperature of our distillate. And this is because, you know, essentially this um, this wine that we have here, this distilled alcohol, is part water, part alcohol, and water distills at about 100 degrees Celsius. Alcohol distills at about 78 degrees Celsius. So analyzing the temperature 
is one of the critical ways that you can assess how your distillation is going, right? So when you first get things going, and I'm actually, I'm actually gonna plug this in and turn it on so we can get it to start heating up, but um, analyzing the temperature is very important because when you, because alcohol distills at a lower temperature than water, as this starts to boil, you're gonna be hitting about 78 degrees C. You know you're distilling pure mercury of the plant. As that alcohol distills off, you're getting more and more water down here. And as that happens, this temperature is gradually gonna climb and you know that you're distilling more and more water. And basically by the time you get up to like, uh, you know, 98 to 100 C, at that point you're basically distilling water. And that is a good indicator that your distillation is complete. Now the next piece of glassware that you wanna put on there is, uh, is called a condenser. And basically what this piece of glass is, and I don't know if you can see, but on the inside of this, there's a tube that's connecting the top and the bottom. And then there's this outer jacket along the outside that has these kind of two nipples sticking out of it. So what we do is we affix that to our still head. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, well, I'm gonna clamp that down too. So you know, it's good to clamp things down to hold it in place so it doesn't jostle around too much. And um, what we're gonna do is have cold water circulating through this condenser. And what that cold water is doing is taking these very, this hot steam basically and cooling it down. And what that does is it's condensing it, right? It's like if you've ever been camping and you're laying in your tent at night and it's very cold outside and you're breathing this, you know, your hot breath inside the tent, um, on the inside wall of the tent, you'll get these little water droplets accumulate on the inside of the tent. It's basically distillation, right? And what's happening is that temperature difference of hot and cold causes uh, water to condense from a steam into a liquid. So that's essentially what we're doing here in distillation. And the way we do that is here, I've got just a pot of water, of cold water, with um, basically an aquarium pump in there. And so what we're gonna do is we just hook a tube with the pump to the bottom nipple, and we stick the other tube on the top nipple. And what that's gonna do is pump cold water through this hose. It's gonna fill this sleeve and then the water's gonna come out. So we're just circulating water, cool, cold water through that condenser. And as the distillation goes on, obviously it heats up, this water tends to heat up. So I just put ice packs in there to make sure that that water stays cool. Um, now the last thing that you need is just something to collect your distillate. Um, you know, I sometimes like to use a flask to do that. I do always like to sterilize everything with a little bit of alcohol. This is just a, oh, I'm out of shot. This is just a 70% alcohol um, solution. So it is nice to sterilize everything. I had sprayed everything else out before we started. And you just hook that onto here. And um, it is... Uh, kind of floating. So what I'll want to do is get some towels to put under there to, th to suspend that. And, um, and this is basically where we're going to be collecting your distillate. And um, it's, oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, so we'll just put some towels down here and affix our flask. And that'll sit right like that. So here's our essential oil, dist or um, our alcohol distillation setup. We've got our boiling flask, which is like that lower world, the underworld portion of the still. We have the bio flask, our expansion chamber, and the condenser. This is kind of the middle world. And then up here on the still head, this is what I tend to consider the upper world 
of the distillation because everything in this setup, this is a microcosm of life. This is a reflection of nature, right? Everything in alchemy is just a reflection of what nature does. I mean, what, you know, like I especially think of the water cycle when we're thinking of distillation. You know, if you think you've got a puddle on the ground and the sun's shining in the sky and it heats the water in that puddle up, that water evaporates up into the air which is all we're doing here, and then it condenses into clouds, and then when it gets heavy enough, it rains back down. That's all we're doing here. We're imitating the cycle of water when we're doing distillation processes. So one of the things about this upper world part of the still is that it's, because this is a microcosm of the macrocosm, whatever is going on in the macrocosm in that moment i.e. in the celestial world, which we use the science of astrology to understand in alchemy. So it's receiving those celestial influences. So this is why the timing of the work that you do is critically important. We want to line up we're working with Hawthorne. I work with Hawthorne under rulership of the sun, which rules the heart the circulatory system, kind of your core essential self, which to me is very much what Hawthorne is all about and the sun. So we're doing this on Sunday and then there's planetary hour systems where you line it up with the hour of the day too. So then that solar force in uh, astrologically is strongest at that time. So that you're, when your spirit is moving up and turning into this vapor, right? It's a vapor, it's invisible, it's, it's like a spirit, right? It's there, but you can't really see it. It's receiving, it's being imprinted with that celestial influence. So that's why, you know, I always say, like herbal medicine is harvesting plants, alchemy is harvesting planets. So this is one of the ways that in alchemy you harvest those planetary influences and anchor them into the medicine. And because the medicine is prepared astrologically, the, the medicine functions astrally, meaning it works through our astral body and heals that link between our physiology, our psychology, and our soul. So um, just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the subtle energetics of distillation. Um, your own internal state is also very, very important when doing works of this nature. So you never want to do uh, any type of alchemical works, if you're in a bad mood or you're arguing with someone or you just feel somehow that day, um, it's really important to make sure that your heart and mind are really clear because this process is very sensitive, right? The medicine is very sensitive. And so whenever, for me, like whenever I'm around distillation or any of the spagyric works really, I always do my best to really maintain a clear mind, a clear heart that, you know, we're putting a prayer behind it. We're really putting that good intention, that good positive feeling. Oftentimes, you know, I'll just say a prayer with the glassware, with these instruments that we're using, with the plant that we're working with in this process of transformation so that it just has that good intention behind it and that we're making sure that we're in a place of clarity and um, presence and consciousness when we're, when we're doing this kind of work. Um, so I'm gonna let this warm up for a little bit and then we'll come back and I'll kind of show you a little bit of what's going on within the still once this starts distilling. So um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come back and check that out in a minute. All right, everyone, so our distillation is running now. We've got a really nice gentle boil going here of our Hawthorne mercury or alcohol or spirit. And what we see here is happening is that these, um, the fumes or the alcohol is volatilizing up, expanding in our expansion chamber. We're getting good condense condensation happening here that's filtering a lot of the uh, water and the things that we really don't want to be capturing. So we're getting a pure alcohol distillation. We're getting, uh, we're running at exactly 78 degrees Celsius. So we know we're distilling pure alcohol and it is very gently uh, condensing back down and collecting in our collection flask. Now, as I was saying, this process 
is essentially what in alchemy we refer to as volatilization. We're taking a fixed material and volatilizing it up into the heavens and then refixing it back down into a material form. And this is so much of what al alchemy is all about, is that we take a natural object or being, um, like a plant in this case, and we volatilize its soul, its spirit, and its body, or its sulfur, mercury, and salt, and volatilize it up into the heavens where it is capturing these celestial influences and then anchoring it back down into a physical form. And each time we do this distillation, we're pu further purifying the mercury or the alcohol of the plant. Now on a physical level, that means we're yielding a higher percentage or higher proof alcohol each time we do that. Um, but more from an alchemical perspective, what we're doing is we're concentrating that celestial force into the medicine. We're concentrating the, um, the subtle properties of the medicine so that it's actually going to drive the medicine deeper into the physical tissues of the body as well as to the subtle architecture of the astral body. And that's going to be clearing blockages through the astral body, maybe certain psychological patterns, emotional patterns, um, especially this process here because we're working with the mercury of the plant or the spirit of the plant, we're really working through our psychology and that's what this portion of aspagyric has an affinity for is our own psyche, our thoughts and our emotions. And so just in the same way that this medicine is being purified, when you take it, it's going to purify the corresponding parts of yourself. In this case, our psyche. So maybe there's certain you know, conditionings in your mind or in your heart, certain traumas, uh, maybe karma, maybe past life things, um, maybe ancestral patterns, uh, maybe certain qualities, patterns, dynamics within your epigenetic structure that these medicines will actually help to shift and transform to purify and so that you can be more refined, more true to your authentic, true self um, as compared to living from more of this conditioned self that we see is so unfortunately common in our modern culture. So that is really what is going on here with the distillation of the mercury. And I know it's kind of far away, so I'm gonna pull up here and um, sh kind of show you a little more close up of what's going on here with this distillation. All right, so here's a little close up of our distillation setup. We've got our heating mantle. I've really adjusted the temperature of this mantle so I know exactly where I need to put that dial to get a good distillation of the alcohol. And here we see a very gentle boiling happening of our mercury. It's coming up into our expansion chamber where you can see lots of distillation happening. Now a lot of this more um, kind of water, you see it's kind of foggy almost. That is getting a lot of the water separated out from our distillation and that's what yields a pure uh, distillation which is why that expansion chamber is there. Coming up into our still head, we've got our thermometer. Now notice here, look at, look at how you can't really see anything right? When you're distilling water, that still head is going to look like this. But look at, you can't really see anything. You see these very thin lines and it actually kind of corkscrews down and over. It's this invisible material that then comes down into our um, condenser. And if you look there in the middle, you can see that condensation happening, that mercury is being fixed back down into a material and collecting in our collection flask there. So there you can see is our process of alcohol distillation. This is the purification of the mercury of the plant and a critical aspect of the alchemical process. 
All right, so I hope that provides some insight for you in terms of some of the more in-depth processes that you can do in the practice of herbal alchemy. Now, I know this might seem a little overwhelming for some of you, right? Like, oh geez, in order to practice herbal alchemy, I gotta have all this fancy equipment and glassware and all this expensive stuff, but you really don't. You can do most of these spagyric processes with things that you already have in your kitchen, right? If you got a teapot and you've got a stove and you can get by a little $2 you know, cork and a piece of pipe, you can distill. If you've got a bucket, you can ferment. If you can build a fire, you can calcine. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by the practice of herbal alchemy and think you gotta have all this fancy expensive equipment. And honestly, a lot of this stuff you can buy pretty cheap off of eBay, right? So it doesn't have to be this huge investment for you to start practicing herbal alchemy. Now, I sure you are aware of the herbal alchemy training sessions at this point. I've been talking about it a lot. And this is one step in the creation of spagyrics. But in the second herbal alchemy training session, I walk you through step by step a very simple process that is used in spagyrics to create the crystalline mineral salts from the plants that you work with. If you're making home remedies, you're making tinctures, things like that, this is a process that you can incorporate right now in your home medicine making so that you don't have to compost or throw any of the plant material away ever again when you're done extracting it. Something that always really bothered me. I hated having to compost the herb when I was done extracting it. I always felt like there was something missing in modern herbal pharmacy and the alchemical tradition showed me that yes, in fact, there was one third of the essential parts of a plant that we actually are throwing away in literally every form of herbal extract available on the market today is missing this critical piece of the plant. And I'm showing you exactly how to extract that and purify that and make plant crystals. This is like super cool stuff. I know it sounds really complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. So scroll down, sign up for the Herbal Alchemy training sessions. It's totally free. This is an in-depth mini course where I'm outlining for you the amazing synergy between the alchemical tradition and your practice of herbal medicine. And really, this is all about giving you some critical skills and practices and principles for how you can help people on a much deeper level. You know, that's really what this is all about for me is helping you to be of service to the people in your family, in your community, your clients, your patients, whoever, or even just yourself, whoever it is that you're working with using plants, this work of herbal alchemy basically enables you to take your the level of healing in your work with plants to a level of transformation, to a level of really healing not just the body but the psyche and the soul and that is really what is needed on the planet at this time, that our culture needs help, the people need help, the planet needs help, and Herbal Alchemy gives you some incredible abilities and specific ways of working with plants that empower and enable you to serve the people that you work with in a very deep and profound way. And I would love to help you to do that even more. So check out the Herbal Alchemy training sessions. There's a little email and name form at the bottom of this blog post. Plug your name and email in there. If you're listening to this on the podcast, head on over to evolutionary herbalism slash blog and you can um, get the Herbal Alchemy training sessions there. Again, this is only available for another week. So get in there while you can. I'm answering any questions in there. I'm in there every day, multiple times a day, answering questions and comments. It's a great way to directly interact with me. Also, I've got some live casts coming up that I'm going to be hosting on Facebook and Instagram. The, we just did our first one the other day and it was amazing. We had a bunch of people on there. I gave away a bunch of our spagyrics. I gave away evolutionary herbalism programs and it was just 
awesome and we've got more of those to come so be sure to check out the live streams we'll be posting them on Facebook be posting them on Instagram as well as sending some emails out if you are on our newsletter list letting you know about those live casts it's another great way to directly ask me your questions and have me answer them live as well as have an opportunity to win some free stuff. So check out the live cast coming up. Thanks so much for tuning into this blog post. Hope you enjoyed uh, checking out a little bit of my lab and uh, getting a little bit more of a download on some of these important and incredible spagyric processes. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. And until then, take care and be well.